Um, sorry for that. I'm forgetting. Sherry, you forgot to remind me. <laughs> okay. Um, so the homework last week, just for those in the recording, um, the husband homework was do not nag your husband. Stay off his back. Get on his side. Stay out of his face. Get out of his ear. Get out of the Holy Spirit's way, basically. So, Loretta, what... Um, yeah, tell us. So you did last week's homework. How'd it go? Well, I um, I I try to make it a point not to nag anyway, not because just because I get sick of hearing my own mouth. So I well, I try not to nag. But um, it was funny because this it was just this morning. I wasn't even. I wasn't even trying really. And my husband was um, doing, he was cleaning up some, um, he was he was doing the dishes. And so, um, so I, I asked him, I said, uh, cause he, was, he likes to use this scrub brush thing to do the dishes. And I said, um, did you put soap on that? <laughs> and he, I said, you know, because sometimes, sometimes, um, and you know, my mom lives with us too, and her eyesight is is not that not that great, but she loves to wash dishes. So anyway, you know, sometimes I'll pull a plate out or something, and it's it's not clean. So I just, you know, very nicely asked him, you know, because you know, I told him sometimes I pull dishes out, and they're not, you know, they're not all the way clean, and. Mm -hmm. um, I said, so, you know, it might even be helpful to just stick them in the dishwasher. That way you don't have to worry about it. And to my surprise, he turned around and he looked at me and he said, that was so sweet the way you put that. And he put the dishes in the dishwasher. Oh, <laughs> and I, was, I wasn't even trying to, you know, I just, awesome. you know, so I guess. You know, all the study and everything is just really getting into my soul. <laughs> <laughs> so how would you, real quickly, how would you have said it before? Oh, I guess I would have said, make sure you use some soap on that. Or why are you doing the just dishes? Just stick them in the dishwasher. Or something okay. like that. Okay, good. Excellent. Excellent. So who is next? D'Angela and Samaya, right? Was it, or Nicole, wait. Well, go ahead, D'Angela, and, and whoever, the, the third person, I'm sorry, I don't remember who that was. But. Yeah. Um, my uh, thing was making up the bed. I nag about that a lot because I'm the first one out of the bed. He's um, the last one out of the bed. So um, I would nag a lot about having a bed made up because that's my... That's my that's my vice. I have to have my bed made up. I cannot get in the bed messy. My husband has no problem with it. <laughs> he just get in the bed. So I I have to. So mm -hmm. um I you know, it'd be back and forth. So he said, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. And then never it's never done when I want it to be done. Okay. So um one day, um, uh, I think it was like I don't know, the middle of the week or whatever, and it wasn't done. And um, he wasn't in there at that time. And I was like, dang it. I said, all the time, I always have to feel like I have to do this, do this, make the bed, make the bed all the time. And or, or, or would he make it up late at night or whatever? So I was just fussing to myself. And I was going to go in there and say something. <laughs> but a thought came to my head. And it was like, uh, just be happy that you have uh, your husband. But it, it was like, living you have your husband your life and and laying in your bed yeah i was like Ooh, girl that's juicy okay girl okay <laughs> <laughs> and, and i was like I, okay i can't i can't argue with that i mean i'm glad he is alive you know i i got other things i can pick my my battles you know what i'm right. saying so it took me five minutes to make the bed up like you said I count the sec minutes and it took me five minutes to make the bed up. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to argue about it. I'm not going to say nothing because I am. 
thighs, he's healthy and 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 um sleeping in my bed. <laughs> so <Right. laughs> that's that's a Holy Spirit move right there. <laughs> and you know what? A um, couple things, real quick. Um, first of all, you change. You didn't change him. You changed you. You changed. Remember that last? I think it was last week. Thoughts create feelings. Feelings create attitudes. Mm-hmm. You know, behavior, uh, habits, and character. And we need to stop that pattern at the thoughts, and not be reactive, but proactive. And so you decide, I'm going to change the way I think about this Mm -hmm. because the bed being made up or not made up, why does what I really want and need, who am I to judge that that's more important than than what his feelings may be about it? And then um, I forgot the other thing. (laughs) Pray for me, (laughs) y'all. But it's so, but I love it. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't mind that I forgot because what you just shared was powerful. I mean, just awesome. Um, hi, Toretta. Hey, Toretta. Hi, hello, hello, everyone. Hi. Hi, Toretta. I'm Tiffany. I missed the Tiffany. Oh yeah. And Shalene, I'm sorry, Shalene. Hi. Hi, every- hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hi, Hi, Hello. Uh, Nicole, did you say you did the homework too? I did. Okay. I did. What you got? Damn, my tongue is sore. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, we are recording, so. No, it's no, it's sore for me biting it. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Whoa. <laughs> 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 I made Speak it on, ladies. Okay, so you from your from biting it. Yes, yes. From because I'm oh. I'm quick with it. You know, if there's something that he's doing that I don't like or not doing that I don't like, okay. then I will speak very vile, you know, say something that's just not right. And I chewed on my tongue and I was calm. Mm-hmm. I didn't allow myself to get upset about um, trash not being taken out when I wanted it to be taken out. But what I did was I politely set the bags by the door. Okay. I didn't mention it. I didn't remind him. And I went on about my day and I didn't hover it, you know, like a vulture because it was still at the back door but eventually he got up and he said i'm gonna go ahead and take the trash out okay because usually i'm like why don't you take the trash out all you do you just said you don't smell that i can smell that you don't smell that <laughs> okay <laughs> excellent i didn't do that i didn't do that i just <laughs> bagged it nice and neat set it at the door and let it wait for him yeah. and now that's wonderful that is wonderful now- i'm so proud of you yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we are proud of you. <laughs> I have a question for the future. Well, I have a question. Why did you leave it at the door and not take it out yourself? Well, he likes to park the okay. trash receptacles at the front of the house. Mm-hmm. And I always ask him to bring them to the back of the house because that's where my kitchen, you know, is located. Mm-hmm. So um, I let him know that I like the, the the cans in the back because it's easier for me than traveling all the way to the front of the house or traipsing the trash through the house out the front door. Right. So I did that to let him know that, hey, I would prefer the bags, you know, the the, the receptacles to be at the back instead of at the front of the house. Yeah. So in him taking the bags out, he wind up bringing the receptacles to the back of the house. Okay. So we applaud you so much. I mean, that's awesome. And I'm, you know, that, that sore tongue is worth it. Yeah. It's worth it. Yeah. How do you feel? about how you handle it do you feel um I feel different um 
like you know um i i, I feel like i made progress i f- i feel like god was pleased with me yes and and I, we would agree right yeah, I, a bit of progress is still progress. It's still yes. the spirit um, guiding you and directing you. Yes. My yes. challenge to you and to all of us is to make sure that when we, okay, we, so it, it's a first step, a first step not to say anything because that was the homework. The mm-hmm. next step is to make sure that we're not, um, saying something without words does that make sense we want to make sure that our gestures um are not to you know make a point to him with you know in a different way than just using words yeah um but i what i do so well let me let me go back for a second so the challenge is for you and me and all of us just to make sure we're not doing certain things to manipulate or to control him in a different way well if i hint by putting these you know by the back door not the front door but that hey you know what growth is growth so this is not to diminish what you accomplish i still you know i still i get it i get it i get it it? okay (laughs) get it i get it Okay. okay dear i'll stop there then um but yeah, and that, and I and I want to say that like I, I'm not just saying that to Nicole. I I have to do that myself because I you know I have to make sure that my motives. I'm not trying to control without words too. Um, you know, and and to the rest of us, it's just something that's just to keep in mind. So, um, and then real quick, um, oh Shalene and and um, Toretta, anybody do the uh, do the homework this week and want to share. I did. Okay. Literally. So I usually get very frustrated after, you know, we eat dinner mm-hmm. and um, the bath start, like I'll go and wash the dishes, but you know, like the bath aren't taken up. I usually like the, the placemats to be cleaned and then put away. So they're usually, it's usually me doing everything and I get frustrated with my husband sometimes. Yeah. So, and another thing that irritates me too um, at the end of the night, if the living room is like, there's stuff on the floor, because sometimes my daughter, like we work with her, you know, with her homework and stuff, and they'll, you know, there'll be papers and stuff in the living room. So when I'm exhausted after I put it in bed or whatever, and I come downstairs, I get frustrated. So um, the last time when he saw me angrily taking up <laughs> the papers, <laughs> he said, I'll take care of it. And Instead of me reacting and keep on, because I what I usually do is I just keep doing it. Like I don't, yeah. need, I don't need you. Yeah. I just, you know, I was quiet and I said okay, and I walked away. Okay. And he did eventually take care of it. Good. Yeah. Good. It's picking our battles and and then just allowing the Holy Spirit to work on us and getting out of the Holy Spirit's way to work on our husbands. All right. Let's say hello to Corinne. Hi, Sister Corinne. Hi, Corinne. Hi, Hello. Corinne. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hey, Hi. Hi. Hello, Hello. Rainy, Rainy. I'm driving. Yes, I just got in the car. I'm driving. Okay. 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 Drive carefully. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, Toretta, you have? Did you do the homework last week? Don't nag. Uh, yes, I did. Um, I don't have anything to. I don't have anything report. to report different. Yeah. Okay. I just, I try and do that even with my kids, you know, not repeat. And um, yeah, just, I, I, I call it repeating myself because <laughs> I don't think I'm Maggie. <laughs> yeah. I just feel like I, you know, if I say it once or in this situation, just, you know, if there was something that I typically would feel like this is something he would do. I didn't say anything about it. I just went about and did it myself. Great. Great. Wonderful. And uh, the main thing is, do you see God working? Do we all see God working in these situations, working on us? And I would say, if not, if, if not in all of these situations, God worked on your husbands too. 
Yes, he did. Hallelujah. Um, I, I see that in every situation, God worked on, on your husbands, even if your husband didn't say, oh, thanks for not telling me the way you usually say it to me. Even if he didn't say that, it seems like all of your husbands recognized at least some difference in how you handled whatever it is, the, the bed, the trash, you know, um, the, the dinner table, the living room, whatever it is, they that's was part of the beauty of this. If we just make small changes in ourselves, we give God the space. God can take the space. He's sovereign. He's powerful. Okay. But we give God the space and create an atmosphere for God then to move on our husband's hearts and minds to say, Hey, psst, Hey, look at, look at what D'Angela just did. Or look at what D'Angela just did not do that. She usually does, you know, and then, and then, um, your husband uh, responds accordingly. Now it's not a guarantee and we don't do it to get a response out of our husbands. We do it to please the Lord, but the Lord will honor that. And there will, there, the fruits of your efforts will start to show more and more. Um, and that's the goal. So uh, this week's uh, homework is thank your husband for his provisions. Um, and that's even if you make more money than him, provide more to, you know, financially or, or in whatever other way to the household. But it's still expressing, verbally expressing appreciation for his contributions to the home, the bills, the upkeep of the home, um, everything that he provides from his, you know, from, from his end, what he provides uh, for you guys to have a roof over your head and food in the fridge and in the cupboards, um, you know, whatever vacations you guys can afford to have, whatever it is, thank him for it. Um, again, you don't have to do some grand, I'm going to show you my appreciation for all, you know, but just, you know, you know, thank, you know just think, oh, you know, honey, it's something as simple as honey, I really appreciate, you know, the fact that you know, we live in a beautiful, in a beautiful home and, you know, thank you for helping me, you know, you know, provide the things that make for a beautiful home. And then along with that, part of showing appreciation is respecting the things in your home. And for those of you who have children, even smaller children, teach them now how to respect uh, the, the house and the things that are in it. Uh, teach them to to appreciate what the what their parents provide for them, and and that includes dad, you know. And and now I do know that there are some households where the husband may not provide anything, but maybe he contributes in a different way. Um, you know, I do know of situations where husbands just aren't bringing any income, any income. Um, but you know, ask the Lord to show you how can I do this homework in that kind of situation, meaning, you know, is he, is he at least trying to stretch a dollar? You know, um, you can express appreciation for that. Or is he uh, being respectful for the material things that you have in the house? He's not, you know, tearing up the couch, you know, putting his feet on the couch, whatever it is. I, I you know, be creative, seek the Lord's wisdom on it and, and guidance. And, um, and, but just the main thing, thank him for his contributions to the house and home that you live in and enjoy together. Okay. Um, the things that he contributes towards the kids' needs, supplies, whatever it is. All right. Any questions on that? Any thoughts? Need any clarifications? I do want to say something about the homework from last week. I'm sorry. I did want to say something. Oh yes. I did yes. the homework too. And what I and and what to my surprise is um I found out something, a, a big secret about myself. I am a nagger. I didn't know that. Wow. Okay. So so I think that the homework was good because yes, I want things in decent and in order. Yes, I want things like that. So um I had to set, step aside and watch in despair for a minute, but I came back. <laughs> And the Lord did, he did something really nice within me, he touched me. 
And um, I did notice that because I wasn't saying, could you please do this? Could you please do this? The stuff did flow. So, yes, I found that out. I am a nagger. So, okay. I'm working on that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I still, after all these years of teaching on this, I still have to watch myself and not nag. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so I understand. I understand. And, and praise God, too, for um, him. Because part of Mrs. Jones, part of what's, uh, what's our goal at Wisdom's Table? To, to do what with our eyes? To do, turn them inward. Turn them inward. So um, God, you know, show me the real me. Yeah. I've given this analogy before it was table, but you know, a lot of us, a lot of times, you know, even as wives, we're guilty of this sometimes. We hold up, I'll use myself, but we hold up, you know, these little compact mirrors to ourselves, right? Oh, yeah, you know, and only point it to our good parts. Do my fuchsia lips, right? <laughs> <laughs> but what's tough is going to right. in front of a full-length mirror and saying, Lord, show me all the good, the bad, and the ugly, because I want, not because I want to torture myself, not because I want to feel like, you know, I'm just a, a gosh darn mess, excuse my French, but I show me what I need to change. So to, to, to um, so that my life and everything about my life glorifies you, Lord. So if I have to, you know, okay, I'm a nagger. Okay, now you know. And God's going to help you to change it. The first step is acknowledging, recognizing and acknowledging. Is one thing that really um, stuck out, I would definitely say this, is that um, I did do a, examine my heart and examine myself. And it's something that stood out. And I don't know if this will help anyone, but I'll share it, is that um, um, keeping things clean and having things put together the way I, it, some people say it's OCD. I don't know, but I would say that um, I learned that my peace is not in a clean environment. My peace is in the Lord. So even yeah. if it's a little off, um, I can be okay and content in that because God is my peace. And that's what he was showing us. So, yeah. yeah. And and then in a lot of these cases in, in our relationships, whether it's husbands, kids, co-workers, family, extended family members, the bank teller, the fool who cuts you off on the freeway. It's your choice how you react to it. And a lot of times we just react and, and not realize or, for, or we forget that, no, I don't have to let, I don't have to let this person affect me that way. You know, where, where I just start reacting instead of just maintaining control and the proper perspective. And that's, uh, you know, so praise God. Um, thanks for sharing that, Samaya. Uh, really appreciate it. And yeah. that blessed everyone else like it blessed me. Um, yeah, it blessed me too. It blessed me too. Talk yeah. about. Thank you. Yeah, I've realized that also over the years, being so frustrated with so many things that I didn't you know, agree with or things I wanted done differently. And mm -hmm. I come to realize, you know, like I can't be his Holy Spirit and I can't, um, and it just, it kept me in a state of, you know, just restlessness because I wanted stuff done and that's, and I didn't want to be that, you know, so like I was saying before, I'm a lot calmer. I, you mm -hmm. know, pick, pick those battles, you know, and I can be content, like I said, and the Lord, that's what, you know, that's, uh, is my joy and my peace. So I don't, I don't harp on those little things. <laughs> so write this down or remember it. Wives, be his helper, his cheerleader, his friend and his lover, not his mother, not his Holy Spirit. Be his helper, friend, lover, cheerleader. Okay, I may have changed the order, but you get the point. Do not be his mother or his Holy Spirit. You will get bitter and he will get bitter. And yeah. your marriage is just going to slowly over the years. It may take a, a few years. It may take 30 years. But, it's, but if you keep that up, trying to be his mother and his Holy Spirit, it's not, it, it, it's going to hurt the marriage. 
you were not, you know, made to be his mother. So he already has a mother. Even if there's mommy issues there, he's, you're not his mother. You don't marry your son, right? <laughs> if I have to put it that way for the infantry. Um, so be his, his lover, his support, his helper, his cheerleader. Don't be his mother and his Holy Spirit. On that note, um, for toolbox must-haves, um, let's turn to Proverbs 3. Um, I really want to finish um, this portion of our series uh, this evening, and I'm going to try to do it in 20 minutes or so, uh, 18 minutes. Um, so we were, were Proverbs 3, and I want to read the scriptures that we've been going over. We haven't been looking at the entire chapter, but just key uh, passages within this chapter um, to pull out uh, some what I call, you know, the, with the going with the construction theme, uh, uh, building or renovating your marriage instead of tearing it, tearing it down. Um, Proverbs 3, uh, these, are pass these are scriptures that aren't directly related to marriage, but are certainly relatable to marriage. And so um, I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to um, just kind of uh, recount where we've come so far in terms of putting the, the toolbox must-haves. What are the essential tools that we need to build our marriages? So I'm going to read from starting at verse 3, and um, hopefully you guys are at Proverbs 3, verse 3. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Jumping down to verse 11. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son in whom he delights. And then finishing verses 13 through 18. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies. And all the things you, do, you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand, in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who retain her. So in finishing um, tonight's, um, finishing the series on toolbox must-haves for marriage, uh, we've already looked at um, uh, we looked kind of verse by verse in, in those passages, in, in um, those two or so passages in Proverbs 3, and we pulled out keywords. So mercy, we've pulled out mercy. We've talked about mercy and truth, bind them around your neck. We've talked about trusting in God, trust God with all your heart. Uh, don't lean to your own understanding. And then acknowledging God, that's another tool. Acknowledging God in all of our ways, and he will direct our path. Then we talked about um, from verse uh, seven, do not be wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord, reverence God, and how important that is in having that, that tool in your, in your marriage toolbox. Um, then we also talked about um, obedience, being obedient to the Lord, doing things as unto the Lord and not so much as unto your husband or as unto you first. It's to the Lord first, and part of being obedient to the Lord is following what his word says about um, godly Christian wifehood, um, submitting to our husbands. And we'll get into that in this series um, and what that means and certainly what it doesn't mean. Um, and then, so what I want to finish tonight are the tools of uh, chastening and correction from verses um, 11 and 12. So chastening and correction, and then God's love um, from verse 12. And uh, finally, wisdom and understanding from verses 13 through 18. So the remaining uh, tools are chastening and correction, God's love, wisdom and understanding. Then, then Lord willing, um, uh, probably won't, <laughs> won't get done, um, but um, 
I'll just uh, make it short, but I wanted to look also at, okay, we, we have our toolbox, we have our must-haves, our essential tools, but, we, but remind you, going back into this passage and looking at all the, the potential benefits from doing life and, and your marriage the way that we've talked about, uh, mercy, to having these tools, mercy, truth, et cetera, in your toolbox as a Christian wife and what benefits you can expect from them. So chastening and correction. Um, be open to conviction and correction about how you've been conducting yourself in your marriage. Just be open to it. And, I, and again, I'm so thrilled that we took the time to talk about last week's homework because we've learned, okay, some of us have been uh, corrected. And thank you again to Samaya for sharing how, you know, she, God showed her something about herself that she needs to be corrected about. And she, maybe she speaks for all of us, <laughs> but um, she was, she was, um, you know, humble enough to share what that was. And so that is an example of allowing God to correct us. Um, it's just God doing surgery, right? It's not like, kidnapping us and taking us into a back alley to do a knife fight he's doing using a scalpel to that that hurts right a scalpel can still hurt it still cuts it still can leave a scar but it's to improve us to grow us to fix what needs fixing in us and so that's where having that 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 tool in our marriage toolbox we need to be willing to be corrected um and then in, in all my years of teaching the biblical truths about marriage, all the women feel like they've been cut, right? Um, but their reactions to being cut reveals how willing or unwilling they are to being corrected. So I have, I have been hated for this teaching. I have been mistreated because of this teaching, but I'm thick skinned because it's, your, your argument isn't with me, it's with God. And if you think that I'm misinterpreting the scriptures, then come and let me know. And I'm willing to be corrected myself if I'm teaching it wrong. But after you know all these years, almost two decades of teaching this, nobody's been able to prove me wrong. <laughs> so nobody's come that you know, they still may be offended, but my goal is not to offend, it's just hey, if you're a nag, you need to own up to it, like my sister Samaya has, and, and ask God to fix it. You know, if you're, if you're controlling, you need to own it, be corrected and fix it. Um, but some, so, so it's really, I say that about my experience in teaching this, not to whine about it or even complain about it, but just to remind us, hey, none of this is going to work um, your marriage is not going to get stronger or be rebuilt or whatever your marriage needs. It's not going to happen as, um, what's the word, sturdily, if you're not willing to be corrected as, as, it may, as God may reveal it to you throughout your marriage. Does that make sense? Um, that is not to say, hey, if you do have a question or you, something doesn't ring true with you, let's talk about it. But just know I'm not here to offend anybody. I'm just trying to share. I'm just the vessel. I'm just trying to share what thus saith the Lord on this subject. And, um, you know, I'm, and encourage you and admonish all of us because I'm talking to myself too. Okay. My, you know, I keep my eyeballs turned inward as well. Um, some, but some people, some women ignore the conviction. Um, they, they're, they tell themselves they're doing everything right in marriage. And so they don't need to be taught anything or don't need to hear it again. Um, well, they're better wives than me because I, I need to hear it often, even after all these years of, of teaching it, I need to be reminded your husband, excuse me, not your husband, my husband will tell you, yeah, she's still trying to work on that one thing or those 10 things over there. <laughs> Um, but it doesn't, I'm not disqualified from teaching it. I'm just no, you know, it's sanctification before the Lord is an ongoing process, including in our marriages. But God just wants a willing, correctable heart. And he honors our, our genuine, um, authentic efforts to be pleasing to him first. Um, 
So we all need to need to hear it and put it into practice and be and remind one another, encourage one another, um, maintain you know each other's privacy and confidentiality while we're doing it, and um, you know and just keep keep on keeping on. You know, if we fall, then um, that's not the end of the world. God is always faithful. He will always you know help us to get back on track, and then. Uh, help us to bear fruit as we try to obey him. Um, and then, of course, there are those um, those precious ones who accept the correction, even though it hurts, because they know God's word cuts, but it is also medicine. Um, so don't, um, that's just a reminder, don't despise the chastening of the Lord. Let's not detest his correction, as uh, verses 11 and 12 encourage us. Uh, he does it because he loves us like a father loves his precious daughters. And he wants nothing but the best for, for us as his daughters. Um, correction is not intended to bring shame, but to shed light on the right way to go. It's a, it's a nudge. Um, so your marriage will improve if you allow yourself to be corrected, molded, and changed by your Heavenly Father through the Holy Spirit. Any questions on that? Thoughts? Uh, God's love. That's the next tool must have. God corrects us because he loves us. I just said that, but just, it's important to reiterate it. Uh, he created an ordained marriage to be desirous, something wonderful, something beneficial. And that's a blessing to mankind from the beginning. Um, and that's, uh, you know, if you haven't, if you weren't here for um, our discussion from the book of Genesis about that um, in this series, and I uh, encourage you to go and take a look at that on YouTube. But um, take the successes and failures in your marriages as uh, opportunities for God to love you through them and through the triumph over them. He will bring you to the other side. So just a general question, raise your hand or put up the, the raised hand emoji, but have there been any happy times? How many of you have had happy times in your marriage, even recently? My hand is up. You can put your hand up. Or put your, okay, great. So because happiness has happened once or twice, thank you, that it can happen again. And the goal is to seek God to say, help me do my part to bring more and more happy times, joyous times in my marriage. Philippians 4, 6 says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So that means we can ask them for that. Lord, give me, give our marriage more happy times. You know, make it more, more happy times and less bad times. And if it's really bad right now, Lord, just let us have something good and have still have more, more of those good times. Um, and if it's really great, then, then, hey, only God can make it even greater than it already is. But there's nothing wrong with asking for that. It's not selfish. It's just he, he ordained marriage to be a wonderful, joyous, precious, special thing between a man, one man and one woman. Um, so, um, you know, we pray for it. Take the successes and failures. Um, I said that. Uh, sorry. Let's see what time it is. Okay, I'm good. Don't dwell on past mistakes, your own or your husband's. Don't dwell on your past mistakes, his past mistakes, errors, sins of pride or neglect of your calling as a wife. Don't dwell on your own mistakes. Don't dwell on your own errors. Don't dwell on your own sins um, as a wife. Learn from them. Keep practicing the application of God's word in your marriage and praise God for his loving lessons, even those that are hard lessons to learn. Okay, God loves us. Any questions or thoughts on that? Oh. That just reminds me, Laurel. Yeah. God, God really loves my husband. Yes. And so, shouldn't I reflect that? 
Absolutely. If God loves your husband, who are if God loves our husbands, who are we to to judge that they don't deserve our love? Now, God's love is the ultimate kind of love. You know, no greater love has any man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. That's what Jesus said to his disciples. But he laid down his life. We're not required to do that. But that, but the point is that's the kind of love that God gives us. And if he loves us that much, it's not because we are inherently worth it. But because we're made in his image, we're special. We're, we're you know, far more special than the animals and the creatures and the birds and all of that. Um, and so we, if we see our husbands, first of all, sometimes not, not, maybe not first of all, but we, we need to see our husbands as God sees them. And we need to see ourselves as God sees us together. We can't have self-loathing and and um, certain things that some of us deal with, you know, where I'm not worthy, you know, I'm, like we feel worthless, we're very insecure, whatever we're dealing with because of, you know, trauma in our lives or neglect or whatever. Um, we have to try to see our husbands and ourselves as God sees us um, and, be, and let that humble us. Okay, thanks, Sherry. Uh, the last tool is wisdom and understanding, and that's from verses 13 through 18. And uh, I won't be able to go through them, um, you know, exactly, you know, to, to in depth right now, but I encourage you to read that passage again. And I, I just have a few things to say about it for now. Um, these next six verses emphasize the absolutely essential need for you to be wise and keep growing in your understanding about your marriage. James 1.5 says, if anybody wants to, you know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but if anybody wants uh, wisdom, ask God and God will give it to you generously. So if you're in those tough times of your marriage, even the toughest times, and even if you don't have tough times, you know, some, some marriages don't have, you know, the worst of tough times, but no matter what state your marriage is in, Always, every day, ask God for wisdom. Lord, help me be a wise wife. Show me what that means. Help me to, to actually implement it on a day-to-day -day basis so that I am, a, a, first of all, Lord, a blessing to you and a light to uh, my house, everybody in my household and to my community, to my church. I want to be a light for Christ, Lord. Help me, um, give me wisdom to be able to do that in, as, a, as a Christian wife. Um, avoid the world's or the culture's perspective on marriage. You've got to avoid it because it is contrary to what thus saith the Lord. The world's perspective, the culture's perspective on marriage is, um, man, it's like a perversion. And whether that perspective, there's, there's a, you know, there's one side is, of course, have at it, you know, um, I mean, I, I, can't, I don't even have time to go down the list of the world's perspective on marriage. It's disposable. It's, um, you know, it, it's, there's so many. We're going to cover a lot of that in this series, in this ongoing series. Um, it may sound, the point is, it may sound sometimes smart or wise, but unless it's based on God's word, it's going to lead you down a, down a path that you do not want to end up in because the devil wouldn't be the devil if he didn't do a bait and switch. Oh yeah, do, do marriage this way. Do marriage the world's way. You know, you have your entanglements, be open. You know, um, um, you know have, have uh, one of those shows, Chalene, that we talked about before, you know, Love is Blind and- Married at First Sight, Love is Blind. At, yeah, Married yeah. at First Sight. Man, please don't do marriage that way because it, marriage is disposable in the world and in the culture and that's crept into the church. Um, it would, you will be lured into its bait and switch trap if you follow it. Um, recognize the value of wisdom in your relationship with your husband, wisdom and understanding. And I, and, and um, what D'Angela said, um, you know, and her, when she was talking about doing her homework last week, it's like, she just switched, it was wise for her 
to switch her thinking about the unmade bed. It's like she decided I'm going to find something that's a higher priority than having my bed, my bed made up when I want it made up. And that is recognizing, hey, my husband is home. He's in my bed. I can sleep with him. You know, he is here. Um, you know, and then as Samaya pointed out, that's juicy. But what do you think is, is not juicy when you're like fussing about him one, one more time to make up the bed when you want it made up? And that's not juicy. That's a little fox, you know, because if you keep doing that, it's going to chip away, bite away, tear away at your marriage. Um, uh, give me like one more minute. Um, pray every day for God to give you wisdom for your marriage. And then uh, practice sound mindedness in your marriage so that you are led more by mercy, truth, and wisdom than by your emotions. Okay, in Proverbs 3, 3, it doesn't say, it says mercy and truth, bind those around your neck, stamp them on your heart. It doesn't say bind your emotions around your, your neck and make sure that's where, how you operate. No, it's mercy and truth that we are to operate by. It's trusting God, it's reverencing God, it's being obedient to God, it's being correctable. Those are all the things that, um, that wisdom and understanding about your marriage will, um, will help uh, fortify your marriage and build up your marriage. Um, and then last, if you give me 30 more seconds, I um, want you to consider what we see in these passages in Proverbs 3 for all the benefits. And you, if you just look at each verse, um, you'll see several things. So one, there's... Um, Nine things that I want to quickly go over, if you don't mind. And if you need to drop off, I understand some of you are on the East Coast. But um, here are the benefits from equipping your marriage toolbox with these tools that we've gone over. Favor and high esteem from God and your husband. That's from verse four. Number two, direction from God for your marriage. That's verse six. That's a benefit. Uh, verse eight, you see health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Um, number four, uh, from verses 13 and 18, you see happiness. Happy is the man who finds wisdom. Happy is the woman who finds wisdom. Okay. Number five, a benefit is invaluable gain of a fortified home. That's from verses uh, 14 and 15. Now, I'm not quoting them exactly, but I think it is certainly uh, applicable. What these verses are saying in general about these tools um, the benefits also apply to our marriages. And number six is length of days in terms of marital, um, your marital sustenance, being sustained. That's how I see that. Uh, and from verse 16, length of days in terms of the, being able to um, do your part to sustain a healthy marriage and, and to fortify it. You keep doing those things and uh, it will sustain um, the bond of between you and your husband. Number seven, riches and honor. Now, this is not guaranteed. I'm not saying, oh, you know, you do tithing together and you're going to get a hundred hundredfold return. That's not, it's not guaranteed, but we can see how God will bless a family in marriage where the husband and wife are trying their best to fulfill their respective roles and uh, being a blessing to one another. And that certainly um, helps to relieve stress and anything that might impede um, their ability to just, you know, maintain a healthy household. Uh, number eight is pleasantness in your day-to-day -day life. That's why when you guys were sharing, some of you were sharing your, your homework from last week and I asked you, how did it make you feel? You know, hopefully it's, it, you, you know, you feel like um, there's some, level of just a level of peace that God gives you it's like oh this is far more pleasant to think of the unmade bed like this instead of like that instead of like the way I used to think about it you know um there's a level of it's, it's just pleasant to be in a household that um where there's there can be peace uh, between you and, and everybody in your home uh number nine uh from verse 18 tree of life 
Now, again, we don't want to take this verse out of context, but we, but the point is to strive for your marriage to be something that draws people around you ultimately to Christ. Get, you, you're, you're giving new life to your marriage, being a blessing to your children, being an example uh, to other married couples, um, shining the gospel as a light to others so that they will want to seek out Jesus. So um, that's another um, benefit of living, doing marriage uh, God's way, doing uh, being a Christian wife as much as you can, because you're going to keep trying and failing, <laughs> you know, but you're going to get better at it if you just keep practicing and uh, the light of Christ can shine through you because they're going to sense God will, the Holy Spirit will um, have his light shine through you and people are going to recognize that. You remember last week, the last thing I'll say, you remember uh, last, I think it was last week um, or the week prior that I talked about the couple that, that the married couple that always argued about the smallest things, like how to bake a baked potato in the microwave. And then when the wife started just changing the way she thought about her husband, good night, Marcy. Um, uh, When she started changing her attitude and how she spoke to her husband and all that, then the kids noticed, hey, mom, dad, you guys haven't argued in a while. So that's the kind of, you know, thing that we can um, accomplish with just by being obedient in this one area. Um, so that's, uh, that's our study. Um, and I'm here for another, up to another hour. If anybody wants to stay on, it's optional. Um, but I'd love to, you know, answer any questions um, that you may have on this topic. Thank you. Thank you, Laurel. I'm going to drop off. Okay. Good night, ladies. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Hey, Nicole. Good night, Lisa. Good night. Good night. Uh, Nicole, can you stay on for a minute unless you've already dropped off? Well, she's still there. I'm looking for her. Oh, I'm still there. Okay. Oh, I know. Where is she? Will you say something? Um, D'Angela? I forgot I was on you. <laughs> oh, um, number four, when you was doing the list, I think I missed number four. Okay, number four is happiness. Well, the one before that. Health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I'm still here. I'm here. Okay, yeah, can, I'm can stay. You, okay thanks. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh. Anybody uh, uh, have any other? No, I'm here. So if you you know have any questions or comments, um, let me know. I wanted to did want to. Oh, well, I I have something. Yes. And so uh, earlier when uh, Maya had <clears throat> talked about what she realized during um, you know the homework. Mm-hmm. That you know she was a nagger. I, I, I am one too. I never wanted to admit it because I felt like I had a right to. And also, I realized in the process of the um, um, what I spoke about with the trash that I'm a manipulator. You know, try to get things to go the way of. Uh, you know that I, I want them to go, and I don't want to flow like that. I do, I do want God to be pleased with how I'm moving, and not, you know, doing it as having a, you know, ulterior um, motive to benefit mm-hmm. my needs in the way that I want to do stuff. And so, um, and I have what I wanted to that when you, when okay, yeah, thanks, Mar. We are still recording, but I can turn it off. I can pause it. <laughs> 